Today we are going to talk about Google Ads price extensions. They are one of the manually created extensions within the platform. If your ad rank is high enough, these extensions can apply to your text ads on both mobile and desktop devices. Now the name is pretty self-explanatory. It's a price extension, so we can showcase our price for specific products or services to any user who may see them within your ads. One of the benefits of these ads is that they kind of work as a call out and a site link extension. So in this video, I want to show you how we can set them up within Google Ads at a variety of different levels. But most importantly, I want to focus on how we can use these price extensions. So I'm going to show you a few different strategies I have tested out in accounts and have seen some success with price extensions. So let's dive in. In order to start creating price extensions in Google Ads, we first need to head over to Ads and Extensions, and then click on the Extensions subcategory. Next, hit the blue plus button and choose Price Extension. Like most ad extensions, we can add our extensions at the account, campaign, or ad group level. Now, depending on what type of account you have, this account, campaign, and ad group structure should really help guide you in how you should set up and implement your price extensions. Let me explain. Let's pretend this is a new account, and I just want to get a baseline of ad extensions created just to try to help and boost my CT. Now, by default, if I'm looking at creating it at the account level, I need to look at all of my campaigns here on the left-hand side because every price extension I create at the account level could show up for any text ad in any of these search campaigns. Let's work on creating some price extensions to show you how we can cover the account level. You do have the option to use existing price extensions, but we're going to pretend we need to create one from scratch. You have the option to choose your language. I'm going to stick with English. Next, you can define what type of price extension you'd like to create. While a lot of the examples I'm going to create is probably focused on an e-com type client, you can see price extensions do not have to be just for e-com clients. We see specific events. If your price is changed by location, service industries, if your price is changed by neighborhood that you service. We have product categories, product tiers, the level of service that you offer. So don't rule out price extensions yet just because you're not an e-commerce site. And I will have some non-e-commerce examples later on. So from an account level perspective, I may just stick with brands. And as you can see on the example over to the right, we see brand one, brand two. Those are going to be our main headers for the price extension. Depending on your geographical location, you can update the currency. And then you have the option to add a price qualifier. By default, there will be no qualifier, but then you can add from, up to, average, and I'll choose one of them just so you can see what it looks like. So let's begin adding our price extension items. First, you need a header, which can be up to 25 characters long, and then add your price. After the price, you have the option to specify if there's a unit quantity. These really don't apply at the e-com level, but you can see these apply more towards service type industries, SaaS or subscription industries, but I just wanted to make sure you knew that this was an option. Next, add your description, and then your final URL. If I scroll down and try to click save, you get a warning that you need to add at least three price extension items. I ran into this issue before with a SaaS client where their product only had two tiers a user could purchase. It was a one or the other situation. We couldn't use the price extension because we did need a third option. So we know three is the minimum. Just for your reference, you can add up to eight price extension items. But going back up and looking at the example, here's mobile and there's desktop, not all of your price extension items will show. It's definitely easier on a mobile device for a user to scroll over, but you'll want to make sure that your most visible items are towards the beginning. So let me add my second price extension item, and you can do so by clicking the pencil logo. We need a second brand, our price, our description, and our final URL. Clicking on these little arrows will close your price extension item, and that gives us the ability to move price extension items and rearrange the order if we want to. So let me add my third one and show you something else. I added a third price extension item, but the header is the exact same as an item that we have already created. If I try to click save, we get a warning that we have duplicate headers. So clearly this is not allowed. Each header for your price extension items has to be unique. Your description on the other hand can be exactly the same. So in this new one I created, the description stayed the same as free shipping. We could leave that as is. If I update one of my headers and then try to click save, we can see that updating the headers worked. My price extension is saved, and when we're looking at specifically just the price extensions, we can see it's at the account level. So this price extension could show up for any one of my campaigns. Now if I'm going in and reviewing this, I probably will realize that it's not the best option for me to use just one account level price extension. Because if I look at my campaign, I'm like, that would look kind of weird if people are seeing Nike, Adidas, Converse prices, and they were looking up keywords that fall under my bedding or cookware category. This is where you may need to look at going deeper and start creating campaign level extensions. So when I create a new price extension, I can then choose to add it at the campaign level. You can then choose your campaign. So I know this price extension will only show up for this campaign. I refresh the screen here a little bit just to show you the ad groups within this campaign. Just 
how we looked at our campaigns when creating the account level extension. I want to look at my ad groups when creating my campaign level price extension. If we're creating this at the campaign level, I want to make sure this price extension can make sense for any way it can appear for the ads within this campaign. So I came from a corporate retail background, so this is an area I'm pretty familiar with. We can look at the ad groups in this campaign. Men's jeans, men's pants, men's shirts, men's suits, men's underwear. So possibly we could still use a brand type for this price extension. That could be one option for you to test. Or since the ad groups are broken out by categories, we could potentially choose the product category type and let me quickly go in and fill in at least three tiers just so we can keep moving along I kept all my descriptions the same I'm gonna keep all my prices the same just to make it easy all of my headers are unique and now since I'm speaking at a categorical level I most likely want to send these users to a category page on the website so in this pretend example there's a men's department then it's broken down by jeans same thing with the second price extension item main categorical page of pants and then finally shirts if everything looks good we can save this one. And now since I'm within this campaign, I see just this one price extension that's gonna satisfy all of my ad groups. But now we can break it down even further. Let's select the men's shirts ad group. If we click on this specific ad group, the campaign level extension is still there because it still applies to this ad group. But now since I have an ad group selected, I can add a price extension to the ad group level. And again, brands would probably make sense, but I'm gonna break it down by product categories again. And under this specific ad group, there could be a variety of shirts that we sell. First, there could be t-shirts, there could be polo shirts, and then you could have dress shirts. I'm gonna leave the price the same again. I know $45 seems pretty high, but it's just the number that came to my head. Then our description, and then our final URL. You can see in the first price extension item, we just sent them to a deeper category page. We're trying to help the user better find what they are looking for. Same thing with the polos URL. And finally, the main dress shirts URL. If we click save, we see the campaign level price extension does not show up anymore for this ad group. This is because the ad group level price extension will override the campaign level extension. If you want that main categorical campaign extension to show up for this particular ad group, you're gonna have to duplicate that campaign level extension at this ad group level. Level. Let me go back to the search campaign level. Just to clarify, at the account level, this brand price extension will show for every single campaign. Highlighted right here is the men's campaign. And we can see right here, it's calling out this is at the campaign level. So every single other campaign in this account will see that brand price extension, except for the men's campaign. They will see this category breakdown price extension. And then going down to the ad group level, only the men's shirts ad group in the men's campaign will see this price extension. The other four ad groups in this men's campaign we'll still see the main categorical price extension. So hopefully that explains the priority levels of how price extensions work. So now we know how to set up a price extension and we know the hierarchy of how they could show depending on what level you've set up that price extension within your account. Now, just because you've gone in and set up your price extensions, even one safety net one at the account level, and let's say your safety net price extension at the account level will apply to all of your campaigns. It doesn't mean we should forget about this extension forever. Our goal with price extensions is yes, it's to drive goal conversions, but to do that, we need to help users find what they're actually looking for. So there are several ways that we could set up our price extensions to test out different variations and see which layouts actually work the best to help you achieve your account or business goals. So next I wanna dive into a few ways that you can test out your price extensions to see if it's the better fit for your account. Probably the most common way to set up your price extensions is to test around with price sorting. Here's just one example already filled out. But even when you start creating a new price extension, Google's default example shows you a price extension going from lowest price item to the highest. And that's gonna be the most common one, and that's no surprise. If you're trying to sell something, whether it is a product or a service, you know people are always looking for a deal. They're looking for the cheapest option. So yes, feel free to try that out, going from the lowest price item or service to the highest. But that may not be applicable to every single account. Let me show you why. I've worked with many accounts out there where they don't want to attract the people looking for a deal. To be blunt, they don't want the cheap skates. So sometimes I have tested out price extensions with clients, sorting by the highest price product category and then filtering down to the lowest ones. This is one way that we can pre-qualify users. I don't want someone looking for the free option. I don't want someone looking for the deal. I want the user who has the money, is looking to spend it, and is willing to invest in a higher quality level of service or product. And also one little tidbit or tactic you might wanna test out 
is framing the price extension. See, in this example, we're kind of sticker shocking them with the enterprise level at $1,000 a year. If they bite at it, great. However, psychologically, most likely people are gonna look at what's next. We're knocking the price in half on the second one, but in our description, we're saying it's the most popular package. And we word it that way on purpose. You may not expect anyone to sign up for that $1,000 a year one. If it's a way to kind of bait them into that $500 a year one to make it seem like it's a better offer, or it's the option that's gonna best suit their needs, sorting your price extensions this way could have a few extra benefits. Just like sorting by the lowest first might not be the right option for you, sorting by the highest first might not be the right option for you. You will never know until you test it out and see if it works within your account. Another strategy for testing your price extensions could be sorting by the popularity of the products or product categories. And by popularity, I'm talking about what's hot right now. What are people looking for? You may have a product or a brand that's cheaper than everyone else or see more quality than anyone else, but it doesn't mean that the user actually wants them. So in this example, I just looked up on Google the most popular toy items of 2020. Pretending that I'm a toy store, those would be the options I would select. The first three options that are the most popular, these are what people are looking for. These are what people are already pre-planning to buy for Christmas so they don't miss out on what's going to be the hot item. And we're clearly calling out in our descriptions, we have it in stock. You're looking for it, we have it. Or in the second description, we see, hey, beat the holiday rush, get it now, pushing what's popular. If you look at the actual price assortments, it's all over the board. I'm not sorting by lowest to highest or highest to lowest. I'm sorting by what we think people actually want the most. And that's gonna hopefully help drive more traffic and get me more sales. Another price extension testing strategy could be for awareness building. In this example, we're using a concert venue scenario. There are new shows being announced all the time. So if you wanna boost awareness for a new show that's announced, you might make that your first choice, right? And this is just one example from the event category, but this could be anything, new products that you have coming out. Maybe you have a new software update that was just released. Anything that is new that needs extra eyeballs on it, you're trying to build awareness for whatever product or brand that is, maybe test that out with a price extension. If you're help driving traffic to that particular product or service page, that can help boost the audience number and potentially use for future remarketing tactics. You most likely won't see the most conversions from this price extensions, but that might not be your goal. Your goal might be to just drive awareness. This next option for price extension testing is probably more for subscription accounts. Consider to test your price extensions by monthly or annually billing. I took this example from the GoToWebinar website. Now these aren't all their options, but these are the first three options sorted by price. At the time of this recording, when you go to the GoToWebinar landing page, the pricing toggle lets you switch from monthly or annually billing. And I've run into this with a few other subscription clients I've had in the past too. So test out those two pricing tiers against each other. And you can have those price extensions running at the same time. So in this first example right here, I would want to test out what my price extension looks like if the user sees it build on a monthly basis, see what kind of performance it gets. Then the advertiser can duplicate that exact price extension and just change the units from month to year. Both of these options are going to be found on the landing page, but then you'll be able to see which one is actually more enticing to the user. Initially, you might think people might be afraid to be locked in for a year, but you will never know unless you test out these two formats against each other. And I had to close out on this one because this one is my personal favorite, using price extensions to promote free trials. Believe it or not, $0 is an acceptable price that you can enter into your price extensions. So if you're looking to at least get people into your pipeline, you want to give them a demo, you want to at least give them a taste of what your product or what your subscription offers, price extensions could be a great way to do this. I've had a lot of success with former subscription clients utilizing the zero price point to really grow their free trial initiatives. So if there's anything that you offer for free and you have a dedicated landing page for it, open up your price extension with a $0 price point. For any current or former client of mine that's been able to utilize this, this format for the price extension has been by far their best performing one. Setting up a price extension in Google Ads is very easy, but I think the most important part we should focus on is testing out the right price extension, figuring out which one is going to have the biggest impact on your account performance or your business goals. You may be focused on more sales and that's fine. You may want to focus on pre-qualifying the user to make sure that you're focusing on just the right user interested in your specific products or services. It's going to be completely different depending on what type of account you have. So hopefully this video gave you some ideas of how you can set up price extensions and test out a variety to figure out which one works best for you. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.